Gold, jewels, diamonds everywhere. God save the king! But in all the pageantry of the king's coronation, one significant piece was missing. From Queen Camilla's crown, which featured dazzling stones for sure, but not the famous Kohinoor diamond. The 105 carat jewel in the crown made for Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother for a coronation in 1937. A centerpiece of the crown jewels since the 19th century during British colonial rule of the Indian subcontinent. The earliest records of the Kohinoor diamond place it here in Delhi in the jewel studded peacock throne of the Mughal Empire. For centuries, the treasured gem was passed around and, as the story goes, brought calamity with it. But when Buckingham Palace announced earlier this year that Queen Camilla would not don the Kohinoor, it was less about a curse than to sidestep controversy and growing demands for Britain to give it up. You've still woken up and be working its, its dark magic again. Who really owns the Kohinoor is a riddle that reaches back centuries. But understanding where it is now is a journey that starts here in India, passing through Mughal, Persian and Afghan empires, and the first Maharaja of the Sikh Empire, who received it as a gift. Vishwas documented this, then this they made it. Sandeep again, Singh Sukarchakia, a lawyer here, so claims to be a descendant no, uh, and says his that, family is pursuing uh, the Kohinoor to fulfill the Maharaja's dying wish. This matter is between two royal families. Two royal families. What makes the claim of your family more legitimate? The Britishers have taken it illegally. So this doesn't need any legal action. It's just a polite reminder that you are the custodian of this diamond, right? And you should give it back to us. But after Britain's East India Company annexed Punjab in 1849, the young Maharaja then signed a treaty that gifted the jewel to Queen Victoria. Kohanur, meaning mountain of light, became a symbol of empire. And in a sense, the Kohanur symbolizes that. It's one in one tiny little package, as big as an egg, uh, is all the hurt, all the feeling of, of loss, all the feeling of theft. Uh, which many Indians now feel about the colonial period. Giving back the Kohinoor isn't a new debate, but it's louder now with India's rise as a global power. Few have been as determined as Vinod D'Souza. It's not possible to reply to every letter sent to the Queen or... He's written 101 physical letters to Buckingham Palace and to the Queen herself. This is my first letter which was uh, sent to the Queen and she replied. In 2009, yeah, yeah, you 2000. got a reply. Yeah, yeah. She holds it on behalf of the nation and that they can't do anything about it. He says he will keep writing to King Charles until the Kohinoor is in its rightful place. Do you think it'll come back? Uh, I know it's an impossible task, but uh, I have not, not yet given it up because uh, I have made it as a passion till I'm alive on this earth. How far are you and your family willing to go to get the diamond back? After me, my son is going to take care of it. And after him, his son is going to take care of it. It will be continue until it is achieved. We will not rest until our target is met. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.